what's up guys? You saw the thumbnail and you want to learn how to make a samurai sword. Well I'm going to show you because this guy is made of foam and I'm going to teach you how. So get ready. What? Jeez, watch the camera. For this build, you're going to need EVA foam. The quarter inch and half inch floor mats will be just perfect. An X-Acto knife, an X-Acto knife sharpener, contact cement, aluminum rod, rotary tool and sanding belt, and lastly, a heat gun. Well, yeah, there's one more thing you need. Wait up. You gotta have music. Yeah. Siska, boy, boy, Siska, boy, boy. So we drive up. Man, to create something with your bare hands, I can't explain how awesome that is. It's just like you took an idea in your head and made it a reality. You guys can do that too. It doesn't take thousands of dollars, just determination. You just, the idea and the feeling you get from creating something, man, it, I, it's like godlike. This thing wasn't here until I decided to make it a reality. I can't explain it any other way. So don't worry about the money. You'll need some, but not a whole lot. And you can get started with the tools I just mentioned. And most of those things are should be are already in your house. So get started. And on that note, let's start. Alright guys, let's get started in this process. First, you're gonna need the anti-fatigue floor mat foam. That's the quarter inch one. Roll it out so you have enough for six copies. If you're making three swords, that's going to be the required amount. But if you're making one, you'll just need room for two copies. When you roll the foam out, you're going to need something to hold it down. Anything heavy will do. I use some weights. Next, you're going to want to create your rough copy design. Use cardboard, paper, anything rigid that will hold its shape, making it very easy for you to trace it out onto the foam. Once you've created your design, lay it out on the foam and begin to trace out the copies you need. Alright, let's cut these patterns out. You're going to need your X-Acto knife for this and make sure it's sharp. Use a sharpener to sharpen the blade on both sides. This will make sure you cut it out easy and smooth like butter. Alright guys, now that your pattern is all cut out, we're going to need to get rid of the textured side of the foam. Don't use sandpaper on this. If it's all you have, okay, but trust me on this you're gonna hate your life. Use the rotary tool or the sanding belt. And the sanding belt is the fastest, quickest way to do this. All right, let's talk about the aluminum rod. You're gonna to wanna to lay this bad boy down on top of one of the patterns. If your sword has a slight curve to it, you're gonna want the aluminum rod to match that curve. Slightly bend the rod just enough so that it matches the pattern of your design. Draw a line along the rod on the foam so you know exactly where it's going to lay. Alright, now it's time to apply the contact cement. Put a generous amount of contact cement on both sides of the cutouts you're going to stick together. Also, apply some on the rod. Not too much, but just enough on the rod so it sticks one of the cutouts. Wait about five minutes for the contact cement to dry. When it's dry, your fingers shouldn't stick to it and neither should paper. Take the rod and line it up with the line that you drew. Take the other half of the blade and begin to line up the edges. Press down firmly so you know it's stuck together well. Now don't worry if you can see the rod through the foam. This is going to be a good indicator to show you where the blade should begin tapering down to the front. Alright, now that your blade is stuck together, 
Don't worry too much if the edges are uneven or rough looking, because we can sand that smooth. Now, you want to take your blade design and draw a line to indicate where the handle is going to start. And once you figure that out, we're going to start sharpening the blade. We can use a sanding belt or the Dremel to do this. I like to use a sanding belt for this job because it feels like I'm getting this blade ready for a ninja or a samurai master who just can't wait to get it. <laughs> you gotta geek out every so often because if you're not gonna have fun, what's the point in doing it? As you sharpen your blade, just keep in mind, don't make it too sharp because you end up with a very fragile tip. Keep it thin enough that it still looks like a sword, but thick enough that it will hold its shape. Money back, money back, money back, money back, money back, money back. Okay, now let's get creating the handles. You want to make a rough copy design just like you did with the sword. Once you create these designs, trace it out onto the foam. Use a sharp exacto knife and cut out these designs. Let's get back to the blade. Around the handle area, you want to cut away the excess foam exposing the rod. Trace this exposed area on both sides of the handle cutouts. Then you want to carve out this area. The reason for this, when you glue both handle designs around the rod, you will not end up with a bulge showing through the handle design. Once you're done gluing it together, sand down the sides and the bottom of the handle, and you could also taper the edges for a much cleaner look. Now it's time for the fine details. You can add fine details to the handle or even the blade. It's up to you and how your design looks. I use crazy glue for this because I find it's just a lot easier than using contact cement for very small pieces. For any of these small details, I find that craft foam is best suited for that. Any three millimeter, blah, 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 three millimeter, blah, 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 three millimeter craft foam you can find will be great for this job. Once these details are in place, we can begin creating the guards. I won't go too much into detail about this because it's very similar to the process that you use to create the handles. On my swords, I 3D printed the guard. So let me know in the comments below if you want to learn how I 3D print parts. For the guards, we need to create another rough copy of your design. Put that design onto the foam, trace them out. You need two copies, layer them together, cut that in half, cut out an area for the handle to fit, and begin laying out your final details with craft foam. Create all the details you will need and then glue the two halves together around the top of the handle. Now we can talk about scabbards. You wanna take the rough copy of your sword design and make another one but on something thicker, like foam or dual layer cardboard. Creating a thicker version of your rough copy will help your scabbards hold its shape through this process. Without something like this, you'll find your end result will be warped and you'll have a hard time pulling the blade out of the scabbard. Let's begin tracing out this design onto the quarter inch foam. Make sure to leave about a one third of a gap around the edge of your rough copy design while you're tracing. This is gonna make it easier for when you lay down the side panels of the scabbard to be glued down later on. For the side panels, you wanna measure the thick side of your blade. Make sure when you measure to leave some breathing room so again, it will fit and slide in and out easy of the scabbard. Lay out your measurements onto the foam and make sure you have a long edge or a very long ruler to do this. You don't want to get this part wrong because if you do, you'll end up warping your design. Now that you have all the pieces cut out, before you glue it together, you're going to want to sand away the textured side. 
Now I know what you're thinking. Do I have to sand these away? They're inside the scabbard. No one's gonna see it. But trust me, you don't want these inside the scabbard. What happens is your sword will tend to stick to the texture side, leaving those markings on your blade every so often when you pull it out. So my advice would be to sand that off. As you can see, I didn't get this right the first time. So now that I know, I'm gonna teach you guys the right way to do it. People always ask me if I lift. Nah, I sand, bro. I should probably clean that up. <laughs> keeping the thick rough copy in place while you glue on the side panels is great for helping you keep the shape of the scabbard. When you apply the final layer, carefully stick them together. Now try your best not to pull on the foam when you're putting these together. Start from the bottom and work your way to the top. Now that you're done putting this together, you can begin sanding down the sides to get rid of any rough shapes and taper the edges to help smooth out the design. Once you're done, we're gonna need the heat gun. Gently apply heat to both the blade and the scabbard. This will help seal the foam and close up its pores to further smooth out your design. You can use craft foam again to apply any of the minor details that you need on your design. All right, it's time to seal your foam. Use Plasti Dip or Flexi Dip to get this done. When you apply it, I normally do about four coats or five coats, but you want a look similar to leather. It shouldn't look like foam. You want to see a, a nice thick layer of plastic so you have a surface that's ready for painting. Now you don't want to go too crazy with this. Just apply a nice light coat for the first one and let it dry. If you go overboard with this, it will clump up and start to drip. You don't want that. Some people suggest putting your spray cans in warm water for about 30 minutes before you paint will help your spraying process. I've heard a lot of cosplayers having a lot of trouble spraying in colder climates and in the winter time, so I find this helps me out greatly. Now on to the fun part. It's painting time. Make sure you mask off any details that you know are gonna be different colors. Use painter's tape for this and begin creating your colors and your designs. Unfortunately, I won't be going into the samurai patterns in this tutorial. I used YouTube to figure this out and you should do the same. There's a lot of great tutorials on how to design this and a bit of trial and error, but I ended up getting the look that I wanted. Well, that's it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I put a lot of effort into it to make sure I explained the process uh, clearly for you guys to be able to create your own samurai swords. Let me know in the comments below if you have any feedback on how I can improve it. Let me know if I'm on the right track. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Well guys, enjoy your samurai swords and until next time, take care and enough props.